Number 65. A graph of V of T is shown for a world-class track sprinter in a 100-meter race. A. What is his average velocity for the first four seconds? Okay, so let's dissect part A. What is the formula for average velocity? So the formula for average velocity is the velocity at one point plus the velocity at a second point divided by two. That would be the average velocity between two particular points. So in the question is asking us the average velocity for the first four seconds. So what are the two points that correlate with the first four seconds? Well, let's take a look at the graph. Well, that means we have to take the point at the start, right? And what was the velocity here at the start? That well, was zero, right? So this would be zero meters per second. And it wants us to calculate the average velocity for the first four seconds, so the second point should be at four seconds. And what's the average velocity here at this point? Well, it looks like it'll be about 12, right? So this will be about 12 uh, meters per second. So now we have all the information we need in order to calculate. So let's go back to the formula. So the average velocity is equal to the velocity at 1.0 plus the velocity at another point, 12, all divided by uh, 2. So the average velocity here will be equal to 6 meters per second. Easy peasy. Let's take a look at part B. So now it says, what is his instantaneous velocity at t is equal to 5 seconds? Okay. So the instantaneous velocity for this particular question. Now, let me... Hold on one second. Let me change the color here. Okay, so instantaneous velocity at t is equal to five seconds. You might say to yourself, oh, well, wait a minute. Um, it's talking about instantaneous velocity. So I have to find the slope because I know in other problems I've had to calculate the slope when I'm talking about instantaneous uh, velocities and stuff like that, or accelerations or whatever the case is. Uh, but not in this problem. Why? Well, you have to always consider what graph you're being given. So in this particular graph, we're considering the velocity versus time. So if you had a position versus time graph, let's say P and T, right, or a displacement graph, and let's say they gave you, you know, the curve, something like this, right? And they wanted you to find the uh, instantaneous velocity at five seconds. What you would do is you would go up to the graph, draw the dot, and then, I'll put the dot in a different color, and then create your straight line, right, your tangent line, okay? And then what you would do is you would calculate the slope. But why? Well, remember, the slope is change in y over change in x. What are the units of y in this graph? Well, it's displacement, right? So displacement has units of meters. What's the units of x uh, on this graph? Well, it's time, right? So time is in seconds. And look, meters per second, what does that mean? In terms of physics, those are velocity units. So that should make sense. But here, they want us to calculate the instantaneous velocity, but they gave us the velocity graph. It says the runner velocity versus time. So interpreting this a different way, right? Instead of it saying, what is his instantaneous velocity, which is a valid question, but if, if we were to reframe it and say, what is his velocity at five seconds? I would be answering the same question, right? So... What I need to do is, here's five seconds, go up to the graph, locate the point where five seconds would be, right about here, and then just, what is the velocity at that point? Well, it was the same at four seconds, right? It's 12 meters per second. So for letter B, the answer is going to be 12 meters per second. Okay, easy enough. Now let's take a look at letter C. What is, what is his average acceleration between zero and four seconds? Okay, so now again, there we have to. We're thinking about acceleration. So, what is the graph of? Well, the graph is of velocity and time. Okay, so how does acceleration connect to velocity and time? Well, I know the formula, right? Acceleration is equal to velocity over time. Now let's compare that to the formula of a slope, right? The formula of a slope is change in y over change in x. Now for this particular graph, guys. 
what are the units, so let's consider the slope, what are the units of y? They are meters per second. Okay, so let's rewrite this. So m is equal to meters per second divided by what is the value, uh, what is the unit on the x-axis? Seconds. So what units in physics do meters per second correlate with? They correlate with velocity. What units in physics do seconds correlate with? They correlate with time. Wait a minute. I just told you that V over T is equal to A. So V over T is equal to A. But if the slope is equal to V over T and A is equal to V over T, then guess what? Simple syllogism, A is equal to M. So in other words, the acceleration is the slope of this graph. Okay, so the acceleration, the acceleration is equal to change in y over change in x for this graph. So when we think about that, we have to take y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now let's find two points, right? Remember, they want to find the acceleration between 0 and 4 seconds. So, well, it looks like I already found the two points before, right, in red here, 0 and 4 seconds. But let me just now write them as coordinate points. So the point here would be written in terms of a coordinate as 0, 0. Call this one x1 and call this one y1. Now the point here would be represented as the coordinates of x being 4 and y being 12. Call this one now x2 and this one y2. And now I can just plug in the values. So y2's value was 12 as I mentioned. y1's value was 0. x2's value is 4. x1's value is 0. So this just works out to 12 over 4 aka 3 meters per second squared. Then, Great. So that would be the average acceleration. Now finally for letter D Right, it says, what is his time for the race? Uh, so meaning, how long does it take? Well, actually, what is, it? what is his time? What is his time for the race? What? <laughs> uh, I, I think it's just interpreting the graph, but it sounds too easy. Um, so what is his time for the race? I don't know what that exactly does. He, do they mean what is his, like, I don't, I don't know what exactly they're talking about here. Um, sorry to become a little fumbled here, but I, I guess, I mean, the way I'm interpreting it, it might not be totally correct, but it sounds to me like, what is his time for the race? Meaning how fast did he, uh, uh, 100 meters per second. I don't exactly know what the heck they're asking for, except just how long did it take him to complete? Oh, oh, never mind. Sorry about that, guys. You had to you had to wade through that with me. All right. So, um, what they're saying here is that it's a 100 meter race. Okay, and we have his in this graph. We have his velocity and whatnot. Okay. So what we're going to try to do is see how long it takes for him to cover 100 meters. Okay, so that's really what the question's asking. Sometimes these questions are a little ambiguous, uh, but I think we can figure it out. So essentially, let me reframe D in terms of a better worded, in my opinion, question. So how long, how long does it take the sprinter to cover 100 meters given his velocity graph. Okay, I think that makes a little more sense. All right, so let me go back to the graph and let me erase some stuff here just to make it a little cleaner so we can do our work. All right, so now, um, okay, so I'm, I'm going to think about this graph in two parts. Uh, why? Well, because if you think about this in terms of accelerations, one, there's an acceleration going on in this part, and then there is no acceleration for this part. So 
hence why, since the accelerations are changing, I want to break them up into two parts so I can accurately calculate the displacement or the distance that's being traveled. All right. So this will be part one, and then this will be part two. So first, for part one, let's calculate his uh, displacement. Okay, so for part one, let's calculate his displacement. Now we know in terms of part one, the time value is four seconds because that's how long part one, the way I framed it, lasts. We also just found his acceleration before, his average acceleration during this period, it's three meters per second squared. That's the value we found over here, right? Um, the initial velocity we also know, right, because it's, he's starting at zero. So we do know that, that's zero. We also do know the final velocity uh, after this time period, right? Remember, part one goes up to the time of four, and what was his velocity at that particular point? 12, right, 12 meters per second. So it sounds like we got a wealth of information and uh, enough information in order to solve for the displacement. So um, we can choose a, a couple of ways to do this. It, there really is no one particular uh, right way, but let's choose uh, this formula. Change in displacement is equal to VIT plus one half AT squared. So change in displacement would be the initial velocity, but we know that that's zero. So what happens to this whole term? It goes bye-bye. Plus one half, now times the acceleration, which was three, and the time was four, and that'll be squared. So let's see how far he traveled now. So 0 0.5 times three times four squared becomes 24. So this is 24 meters. Okay, great. So 24 meters. All right. So um, what I'm gonna write over here, I'll write it above here. So at four seconds, he traveled 24 meters. Okay, now tell me, how much longer does he have to go? Remember, it's a 100 meter race. Okay, so, I don't know if you're talking to the computer screen, but that sounds good. We would take 100 meters, and then subtract out the 24 meters that he just traveled, to find out how much he has left. So how much would that be? 76 meters. So he's got 76 meters left to go. Right now we're entering phase two of his velocity, right? This particular part. So tell me, what do we know about now phase two? So I'm going to write phase two over here on the bottom right. So for phase two, what do we know? We know the velocity he's traveling with, right? The initial velocity, which would be the start of point of part two is 12. The final velocity of um, part two is going to be, right, it's just going to continue on out, is going to be 12 as well. Okay, now why is that? Well, that is because there is no acceleration, right? If you were to think, what's the slope of this line? Remember, the slope of the velocity versus time graph will tell you the acceleration. What's the slope of a straight line that is perfectly horizontal? Zero. Okay, great. So that's the acceleration. The time now um, let's say the time is what we're trying to find. I don't know what the time will be. All right. And I also know just what I just calculated before, uh, that his, he has 76 meters left to go. Okay. So can I find the time given the information I have? And I, I think we can, right? Now, which formula would you like to use? Right. So we can use a whole bunch of them, right? There's a couple that we can use. So it doesn't matter to me which one uh, you choose. Some might be, you know, harder than others. Uh, one formula to use would be the displacement is equal to initial velocity times time plus one half AT squared. All right, why don't we, since I just wrote that down, why don't we use that? Okay, so uh, another one right might be just a, I mean, you could think about it in a, in a simpler uh, form, but actually this this formula will work out to be simple nonetheless. Why? Well, let's start it. Change in displacement, which is 76, will equal the initial velocity, which is 12, multiplied by time, which is what we're trying to find, plus then this piece. But what's the acceleration, guys? 
it's zero. So what happens to this whole term? Bye bye. So there is no P sun out here. Okay. So problem just works out to be this. All right. And this would have been the simpler formula, like I was saying. You could use a couple of different formulas. Could have just gotten down the, to the simplicity right away. But if I got to solve for time now, I'm going to divide out the 12. So the time here. So let's do 76 divided by 12. So it works out to be 6.33. 6.33 seconds. Okay, great. Now, if we found the time, right, or if we knew the time for part one. So the part one time was four seconds to the, on the bottom left of the page. Four seconds. And the time to complete part two, given he needs to travel 76 more meters, was 6.33. How would we find now the time it took him to run the 100 meter race? We would just add, right? So essentially the formula is the total time, the total time is equal to the time from part one plus the time from part two. So the total time of this race is going to be the four seconds from part one plus the six point three three seconds from part two. And when I add them together, I get 10.33. And uh, I wasn't even considering significant figures here, but it probably would work out to be 10.3 or something like that, or, or just 10. All right. And that's in seconds. All right, guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. Um, easy question, but uh, interpreting what, what's being asked, for, I, in my opinion, for letter D was a little tough. But uh, you may not have as much difficulty, so um, that would be my hope. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll speak to you soon. Remember to subscribe.